there's nothing like summer sweet corn. Go to that farmer's market, find that locally grown corn. It is so good. It doesn't need any butter. Just bite into that corn cob and taste and see that the Lord is good. And I don't know if people still do this anymore, but when I was young, my mother taught us how to pinch a blossom off of the honeysuckle bush and you could take out the back of the blossom and there was this little green stem and if you pulled it far enough that drop of nectar would be there and you could taste the honey from the honeysuckle and of course there is that amazing fragrance from the honeysuckle bush that just overwhelms and intoxicates us the woods and our gardens are full of the glory of God. Jesus wasn't just talking about plants and seeds. Jesus was preaching hope. He's preaching to the poor, the peasants and the subsistence farmers who can barely feed themselves. And he's preaching to everyone who is struggling against all that weighs us down in life. For them, it was the exploitation of the poor in the Roman Empire. For us, the pandemic, depression, racism, and you know what it is for you that weighs you down. God's community. Jesus says, as like a farmer who plants a seed, who buries hard little beans in the ground and goes to sleep and miraculously grain grows. Now, if you've ever been in the Holy Land, you know that the Holy Land is a pile of dirt, a pile of rocks with some dirt thrown in, and it is a miracle that anything grows. By God's power, life grows out of death. Now we want to rush it. We want things to grow faster. We want to make it happen. We want healing or justice to happen on our time, but it happens on God's time. And so planting seeds is an act of faith. Jesus is preaching hope. It will happen. It will come. Have hope. Now, mustard plants were the bamboo, bamboo of Jesus' time. It's fine if you have a little bit of a mustard seed, a little bit of a mustard plant, but like bamboo, they grow out of control and take over everything. Powerful empires compared themselves to the mighty oak or to the towering cedar trees. The birds of the air that would be people of all nations would find a place and rest in the empire. But God's kingdom isn't tall or mighty. It's not a grand empire. God's kingdom is community. People are not vying for power or to see who can be the tallest or the richest or the greatest. People in God's community are just trying to help each other have a good life. Jesus talks about God's community as this tough and scrappy shrub that you just can't get rid of. It grows everywhere. It takes over and try to get rid of it. It just keeps coming back. That's the community of God. And the birds of the air nest in its shade. In the community of God, people find safety and protection. Now, I found these two incredible stories to tell you this week that Jesus would love. That Jesus would just say, okay, the kingdom of God is like this. It's like panko blue corn. See, they're grown by the panko tribe who once lived in the land that we call Oklahoma. Now the panko lived there until 1877 when the US government forced them to leave. 
they had their own trail of tears. And a baby girl who died on that trail of tears was buried by the people who lived in the town of Nele, Nebraska. So now the tribe lives on land that backs up to farmland of Nebraska in that little town of Nele. Now in 2008, it looked like the Panko people might be forced off their land again because the Trans Canada Corporation planned to extend the Keystone Oil Pipeline right through Panko tribal land. It would threaten their water supply. And if it spilled or there was a leak, it would totally destroy their land. Not to mention the carbon produced by the oil sludge. But a seed was planted. A few words. A farmer and a tribal leader began to talk. The tribal leader really didn't trust the farmer. But they held a spirit event. And over a period of years, this farmer and the tribal leader, they built a relationship. They formed, believe it or not, the terribly un-PC Cowboy Indian Alliance. Mm -hmm. Then the farmer gave some of his land to the Pankos to plant some corn. Now true, some of this was a technique to claim that lame land from the transnational corporation takeover. But it was more than that. It was a collaboration of people coming together for the kingdom of God. Now, panko blue corn had not been grown for more than 100 years. The first miracle was that they found some. They found it in a 137-year-old medicine bundle. And the second miracle was that when they planted it, it actually grew. This, this 137-year-old corn grew. And the corn reclaimed the land sown with the tears of the Panko people. Out of death, that baby girl who was buried there rose up life. And if you have listened to the news this past week, you'll know that it also stopped the Keystone Pipeline. The corporation canceled the project. Of course, there were many opponents to the Keystone Pipeline. And all have compared to a transnational corporation backed by big oil and at one time supported by the President of the United States, they were all little, but none as little as an old kernel of corn. That story of friendship and justice and resurrection, that's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God, says Jesus. That's your hope. That's your faith. That's your faith in God and God's power. We see it in corn. A second story. So honeysuckle with its sweet intoxicating fragrance is mostly in our country an invasive species. It's imported from someplace else and it's a bit like the mustard seed. Now it can take over. A little bit of honeysuckle is great, but it doesn't stay little. And these invasive species, we know that they can do terrible things to ecosystems. And so we try to get rid of them. We try to pull out that honeysuckle that just doesn't belong and can ruin things, except in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania, and yes, it truly is named Happy Valley, honeysuckle has taken over. But 
it has taken over from a plant that died out because of climate change. And the songbirds there were once leaving. But now they have adapted to be feeding on the berries of the honeysuckle plants. Those honeysuckle varieties have little red berries in the fall and the songbirds have returned three or four times. There were as many as there were 30 years ago. There's something so beautiful in that story. An unstoppable, invasive plant that should kill everything is restoring life, yields new songs. That's the kingdom of God. That's God's kingdom, the glory in nature. So often we or I get so tired of hearing the stories about violence. Violence between Israel and Palestine. There was another shooting this morning in Austin, Texas. I get so tired of the seemingly overwhelming threat of climate change or the enormity of the need for reparations in our nation. And we live in an area where it seems that we're all trying to work on all these things or some of these things, these problems in the world, and we all want to do our part. And we have big jobs and we're trying to stra raise stressed out kids or help our families with stressed out kids and grandkids and it gets to be too much. And we stop wanting to do anything. I know sometimes I do. I don't want to hear about it anymore and I don't want to be a part of it and I don't feel like I can make any difference. But then Jesus says, wait, you can't do it all. And sometimes you can do some, and sometimes you can barely do none, but you can do some. You can plant some seeds. You can plant some seeds. Jesus says to us, we are not alone in this. God truly is with us. Just look around. God's power of life surrounds us. God's kingdom surrounds us in the mystery and the miraculous ways in which nature brings life. God's kingdom is more subversive and more powerful than any force that seeks to destroy community, that seeks to weigh us down so that we feel as if we can do nothing. God rises up and we rise up as a community with the power of God. We are children of Jesus. We have hope, hope in the seeds that God plants around us and through us or that we just notice. That is the hope that Jesus gives us today children of the resurrection, children of hope. Look around you. Look at the grass, look at the trees, go to nature, rest and heal. If there's a time to just not think about anything, claim that time. Or even in that time is hope. And when you struggle, when you get tired, sometime, eat an ear of corn. 
Doesn't even have to be sweet corn. Smell some honeysuckle. Breathe in the intoxicating fragrance of hope. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, look, smell the hope of the kingdom of God. Amen.